Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to demonstrate three different ways that you can use style sheets to format things on your web page. And I've got a number of videos related to style sheets, and there'll be more coming too, because CSS is extremely cool stuff, and it's the way you can make your web pages unique. So this should be one of the first ways that you, or one of the first videos that you watch, because you want to know the different ways you can use CSS so you can pick the most appropriate way. So I've got a blank web page here set up. I've got doc type definition for HTML5, HTML tag. I've got a head section that has title element, meta character encoding, and the meta author in there. And in the body of the page, I simply have a headline one. Of course, then I have a closing body, closing HTML. So for all practical purposes, this is a blank web page. And I'm using Chrome here today. And this is the web page as it looks right now. Now, in order to really be able to show you CSS in different ways, I'm going to put a little bit more content here on my web page. So let me go ahead and pause my screen. I'm going to put up some content, and we'll start it back up. There we go. I bet you're glad you didn't watch me just type all this. So what I've created here is a definition list. And I don't use definition lists very often, so I figured, hey, this would be a good opportunity to do so. So I've got an opening DL tag, and later on down here at the bottom, I do have a closing DL tag. So that's the definition list. With HTML5, there's also the new dialog element. And I could replace DL with dialog and then still use the same middle part. But definition list is a good use here. And I've got three terms. The first one is inline styles, and this is one of the ways that you can use CSS. Inline styles are used when you want to format just one element on one page, and you don't think you would ever format another element in the same way. Inline styles are not efficient, and they're used pretty rarely. In fact, uh, maybe hardcore, trendy web developers would never use an inline style. But you'll see a number of examples of those. Internal styles are a little bit more common and a little bit more efficient than inline styles, but um, they're still the middle of the road. And internal styles go up into the head section of your page. I actually use quite a few internal styles when I make tutorial videos. That way I can keep everything contained on one page. So if you were going to make a one-page site or just you wanted one page to be unique in your website, let's say you're doing a resume, you might do all of your styles for your resume page internally since there's only one page for your resume and you're not likely to format any other page the same way. So that's internal or embedded styles. And then the most common professional way to go is with external styles. External styles require a separate CSS file and you put all your styles on there. So that's the third way to go and the most practical because with external styles you can format multiple pages. You can format one page, two page, 200 pages. They can all be formatted with a single external style sheet. And you can actually use multiple external styles too. But these are the three ways to use styles. Inline, internal, and external. And in this video I want to use all three ways so you can see how they work. I'm not going to do anything terribly complicated with my CSS though. So there will be other videos for that. And just so you can see how my page is looking so far, let me just jump back over to Chrome and refresh. There's my refresh button. And here we go. So this is the default formatting of a definition list. Uh, my definition definitions, my definitions are indented a bit here, kind of like a block quote almost. And there are my terms. So I'm going to enhance this a little bit. The first thing I'm going to do with my CSS is I'm going to use some inline styles. So let me jump back over to my editor. And inline styles have their place. Let's see. I don't want to use inline styles to format my definition terms because I have three of them. And I would want all my terms to be formatted the same way. So using internal styles for the terms would be inefficient. But I see I only have one headline one. So why not? I'm going to go ahead and use some inline styles there. With inline styles, you use a style attribute inside of the opening tag for that particular element. So I'm going to type in style equals quotation. And then you have to know the CSS that you want to do. For instance, I can do text align colon center. That is one complete style declaration it's called. And now if I save this, oops, I hit the wrong button there. If I save this, jump back over to Chrome and refresh, my headline is now centered on the page. But I can use multiple declarations within a style attribute, an inline style. So after my first one, notice this is right after the word center, but it's still within the quotation mark. I type a semicolon, and then I can type in color 
colon pound sign and uh, zero zero nine that's a hex code for blue uh, medium dark blue so now I'll hit save again back over to Chrome refresh and now I've got a dark blue and if that doesn't stand out too much what if I do nine zero which is green refresh so there now my headline one is centered and green and that's an inline style not the best way to go I might use internals or my external styles but that's a good example this might come up too let's say you have an image on your web page and you just got one image you know and you just want to format it in one particular way or this one image is unique you want to put a border on it or something then you could do an inline style for that so inline style uses a style attribute inside of the opening tag of a particular element the next one I want to check out are some internal styles now internal styles go into the head section of your web page so I'm gonna move up to the head section and I'm gonna type a set of style tags now in my opening style tag I'm gonna type a type attribute type equals text slash CSS now I'm in the habit of putting in this type attribute there's my closing style tag but with HTML5 the type attribute is optional so technically you could just do this an opening style tag and a closing style tag so sometimes you might see a style tag with the type attribute sometimes without just so you know that's a uh, type is now optional in HTML5 now within my style I'm gonna go ahead and type what's called a CSS rule and a CSS rule is pretty similar to the series of declarations that I did in my inline styles here but my inline styles knew what element the h1 to format because they were right inside of that tag so this time I have to do it a little bit differently I have to tell the browser which element I want to format so I'm gonna type DL space now DL is the element that I want to format I want to format my definition list so this is called a selector so after I type a selector I'm gonna do an opening curly braces and then after that I can simply type out what I want to change about it for instance I could do um, background color pound sign FFC which is a light shade of yellow semicolon and then I could also do a border three pixels solid and black and then closing curly braces so this is a internal style this is a complete style rule it has a selector and then it has a set of declarations enclosed in curly braces I've got one declaration which controls the background color of my of my definition list and another one that controls the border of my definition list and multiple declarations are separated by a semicolon so I'm gonna hit save jump back over to Chrome and refresh and now you can see I've got a yellow background and a black border on my definition list so that's an internal style now by the way when I type styles I typically don't type them all in one row like this I tend to do it more this way I'm gonna press enter here and then tab enter and then I put the closing curly brace on a separate line so typically this is how you'll see me and a lot of other web developers write their CSS the selector is on a line by itself and then an opening curly braces and then each declaration is on its own line notice there's a semicolon after each one technically I don't need a semicolon after the last one but I like to be consistent and then a closing curly braces so that is an internal style there we go controlling my definition list and even though I made those changes to the number of lines I take my page still looks the same so that is an internal style now the other one I want to show you is an external style sheet but I need another page for that so I'm gonna open up a new page and I'm gonna do file save as and I'm just gonna save this into the folder where I'm keeping most of my work and I'm gonna give this a, a name here I'll call it CIS 195 week 4 and CSS three ways dot CSS so check this out I'm making this new file I'm saving it and I'm giving it a dot CSS extension because it's a CSS file and I'll hit save so I've got two files up here I've got a file with dot HTML as an extension that's my web page and I've got a file with dot CSS as an extension that's my style sheet file 
Now I do use the same file name here, but you don't have to. I just did it so that way when I sort my files, they'll be right next to each other in the file list. Just makes it easier for my personal management, file management. So now I have this CSS file, and on this CSS file, I want to format some things. Let's see, I'm going to create a rule. And by the way, on a CSS file, you don't need style tags. All you just got to do is start typing stuff. I'm going to put in DT. Those are my definition terms. And I'm going to do font, weight, bold. And I'll do color. And I'm going to, let's see, I'll do a, uh, oops, there we go. I'll do a dark red, medium red. And that's pretty good for now. So I'll just stop there. So definition terms. So my definition terms are going to be bold and red. However, if I go to my Chrome, it's not going to be working yet. And I hit refresh. Nothing happens. There's still plain old black text. Well, I need the browser to know that this CSS file exists. So I've got to jump back over here. And in the head section of my page, I'm going to type a link tag. A link tag is used to link an external file to the current file. I'm going to link my external CSS file to my HTML file. So my HTML file has a link tag and I'm going to put a few attributes in here. Um, I'm going to put in relationship attribute, style sheet, the type attribute, text slash CSS, and then I'm going to put in the href attribute. Now the href attribute is going to be the file name that I want to attach. And of course my file is called cis195-week4-css3ways.css. There we go. So href equals, that's the name of my CSS file. So I'm going to save this, jump back over to Chrome, and watch when I refresh. There we go. So now I've got bold red um, terms. Okay, I'm going to do a couple more quick things, but that's the basic structure right there. So I've got external styles, I've got some internal styles, and I've got an inline style. And let's see, I'm going to go to my definition list, and I'm also going to put in some padding of about 10 pixels. So when I do padding, that's going to put more cushion of space between the border and the text. So when I refresh, a little bit more space in there. And I'm going to put more space above each of my terms. So let's see. Actually, I could do it for my definitions. Let's go this way. I'll create another rule for my definitions. And I'll do margin just on the bottom of about 10 pixels. So this is a CSS rule that only has one declaration. And now when I refresh, there'll be more space in here. There we go. Let's separate it a little bit more. And if you really wanted to make it stand out, I could do a lot of space. 30 pixels. Now there's a lot of space in there. Okay, so that's the basics. Three ways to use CSS. External styles are my favorite um, in real life. Internal styles, I said internal, right? External are my favorite in real life because it's the most practical, most efficient. Um, internal is convenient when you're only doing one web page and you want to format that one web page different than any other web page. Inline styles when you want to format just one element on one page.